Have you grown your own melons before? Do you know how? Today I'm going to show you my melon patch, my watermelon and my cantaloupe and how I take care of them. Hi everyone, it's Chris. And welcome or welcome back to Gardening at the Simon Gaddy North. Watermelon and cantaloupe are the best when growing out of your own garden. Today I'm going to show you my melon patch and how they're growing so far and how I'm taking care of them until it's time to harvest them. Let's go take a look and I will show you my melon patch. I started the watermelon from seed about the end of April. I tried cantaloupe from seed, but I couldn't get it to germinate. So this cantaloupe patch here was started at the local nursery. But they were planted at the same time. Both plants were put in the ground June 5th, and today is August 2nd. My garden is in Sterling, Michigan, hardiness zone 5A. These plants have been in the ground 58 days from transplant. And the plant that you see in the middle, in the trellis, is the passion flower. It actually grows maypop flowers and they are edible. June 5th was technically two weeks past our last frost date. We did have some temperatures at night below 40 degrees, which isn't good for melons. You can see here I also have the black landscape fabric down, which helps with the weeds and the warmth of the soil. Melons like warm soil, seven degrees plus, that is fertile and rich. The land here was used to be farmland uh, before 1970. The previous owners let it return back to the woods. My garden has rich, nice black soil. I didn't amend the soil at all. One month or so after planting, I gave garden tone to the melons. Within the last couple weeks, we've had very warm weather and nice rains. My garden has exploded, as you can see. Holy cow, the melons, the cantaloupe goes all the way out that far and the watermelon is spreading out over there. Cantaloupe and watermelon need full sun, at least eight plus hours. Otherwise, the watermelons and cantaloupe won't develop good. Melons can be started indoors four to six weeks before the last frost. Start in a large enough pot, starter pot, to not disturb the roots during the transplant. These plants don't like their roots to be disturbed. Melon plants have two flowers on them, a male flower and a female flower. You need the male flower to pollinate with the female flower. If the female flower doesn't get pollinated, it will start a little fruit and then it will just dry up and fall off. Let me see if I can find an example of each. So here is an example of a female. You can see the beginning of the fruit. And I believe this looks like one of the male flowers. I don't see any fruit attached to the bottom. Here, here's a male and a female together sort of by each other. You got the fruit and then the flower without the fruit. And it's getting kind of big. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Ah, I'm in the sun. There it is. See it? There's a musk melon here. This is a musk melon variety. Melons also need consistent watering. 
about a gallon per week water below the leaves to prevent powdery mildew from forming. And if you can't water below, then do watering in the morning. The that will give all day to dry the leaves off and to not get powdery mildew. Oh, here's a bigger melon here. I didn't see that one. Right there. Cool. And then there's some watermelon over here. more in there hanging. For the melons that are actually hanging on the trellis, you'll want to get some sort of netting or use um, cut up uh, t-shirts. You can cut it up in a square or use a um, knee-high pantyhose to hold it up to keep it from falling off the vine. And if they're on the ground, you can get melon um, cradles. I actually have some coming weekend because it looks like I'm going to need them. The melons are starting to get bigger so I can uh, get them cradled up, netted up, and whatever I need to do to help protect the fruits. It's a good thing to use like a melon cradle because if the fruit is on the ground, the pests seem to get to the fruits before you do and they end up eating it instead of you. I'll leave a link in the description box below for the melon cradles and the netting that I'm gonna be using on these melons when they start getting a little bit bigger. You'll also wanna inspect um, the leaves regularly for eggs and bugs and powdery mildew. Any leaves that don't look healthy, just prune them off or use an organic spray with neem oil to kill them. The pests like squash bugs, Japanese beetles, and also look for vine borers. Vine borers is an insect that gets into the vine. Allowing the vines to root into the ground helps protect them from the vine borer. Because if they're not, if there's different areas that are rooted into the ground, it helps protect the plant. If they're not rooted into the ground and the vine borer gets to the base of the plant, it could destroy the plant altogether. When it's time to add the cradles or the hammocks for the fruits, I'll show a video on how I use them and how to tie them up to protect your fruits. Another thing you'll want to do is to allow air to flow through here. So if there's leaves that are blocking the fruits and flowers, go ahead and prune some of them off. And all the bad ones that have, like here, you can see the starting of um, the white powdery mildew. I got a little bit here as well. I'm gonna have to, uh, um, a fungicide, and uh, either use that or just remove the few leaves that already have it to keep it from spreading everywhere else. If you like watching garden tours, check out my Simon Getty North Garden Tours playlist. It has my moon garden and my vegetable garden tours that I have started this year. And if you like my video, please smash the like button. And please leave a comment below and let me know if you've grown melons. Watermelon, cantaloupe, how did it work for you? Um, what's your growing season? Did you start them indoors? Did you direct sow? What's your grow zone? Um, let me know. Please leave a comment. I'd really love to hear from you. And if you have a question, just ask it and I'll get the answer to you. And if you haven't become a Simon Getty subscriber, please become a Simon Getty subscriber today. And if you are a Simon Getty subscriber, I thank you for supporting me. Live, love, laugh, and garden.
Hope to see you at the next video. God bless.